Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another RK's voice acting. This week I'm also shining a spotlight on a personality that transitioned from radio to voice acting and that is Pure Hazard. Sometimes, well all the time really, when I research someone, I find many similarities between the actors. The source, or the event that sets them on the road to voice work might be different, but the process is near identical. Do something else first, like radio, theater, or screen acting. Get discovered by a key character, like an agent or a director, do the audition and start working. Just like Jack Angel, Neil Russ started in radio and flipped over to voice work. So without any more stalling from me, let's take a look at the voice of the jock of the Autobots, Springer. Born on December 31, 1944 in London, England as Nielsen David Ross, Neil was raised in Montreal, Canada, until his family moved to Long Beach, California when he was 12 years old. A British American, he is noted for his transatlantic accent, being a versatile voice actor, announcer, narrator, and a truly amazing panel guest at cons. During the many interviews I read and watched, Neil recalled he was obsessed with reproducing accents and voices he heard on the radio when he was a kid, almost compulsively. He made his radio debut in the fourth grade when he was chosen to MC a school assembly that was broadcasted on Montreal's CFCF radio station. A couple of years after, once his family had moved to Long Beach, he was inspired by the Southern California rock stations and DJs and decided to have a career in radio. Once he finished school, he worked at KMUR in Salt Lake City, Utah, KORL, KJMB and KKUA in Honolulu followed by KCBQ in San Diego to finally end up in California working on KYA San Francisco and KMPC Los Angeles. While working in radio, Neil often wondered who were those people who did voices for cartoons and commercials, narration for documentaries and announcers in movies. Figuring they were on-screen actors picking up a few bucks, he finally discovered the truth when striking a conversation in 1970 in KCBQ's parking lot with a promoter who mentioned a guy named Danny Dark who was getting very rich doing voiceovers. Realizing it was a completely separate business and he could make a living with it was the beginning of a long transition from radio to voiceovers that took the better part of 15 years. He went to workshops, submitted and got rejected by agents, but he never gave up. Eventually he got signed on, and in the beginning he did a lot of commercial voice work for companies like Walmart, AT&T, Volkswagen and Mattel, and also did lots of promos for many different networks like ABC, NBC, CBS, TBS, and Fox Kids. Neil's voice has been heard in many television sitcoms and feature films, most notably in multiple episodes of Seinfeld, Warren Beatty's Dick Tracy, and Back to the Future 2 as the Biff Tannen Museum narrator. Before he worked on my favorite franchise, Neil worked on Spider-Man and his amazing friends, voicing Norman Osborn, Cyclops, and Scorpion, on Voltron he voiced Pidge, and Keith, which he reprised for Voltron The Third Dimension. Then he got working on the Transformers. Even if we mostly know him as the first Autobot Triple Changer Springer. Well, well, Commander Modesty's here! In season 1 and 2, he voiced the Dinobot Slag. Dinobot! No fool around! And the Constructicon's Bone Crusher. Remove the debris, long haul! And Hook. It's bad news, Strapper. They've brought out the heavy artillery! Those three roles he reprised for the movie. Excuse me! On top of taking the role of Springer. Seeing as how they would have detonated four quarters, I think it was a good choice. That character was his main role in season three, but in season four, he took on the roles of Point Blank. But the key! Crosshair. Of course, I have been wrong on one or two occasions. Six Shot. It's like shooting cyber ducks in a barrel! Monzo. It'll be a pleasure, boss. This'll teach you to mess with us, you little punk! And Fracas. It's me, I'm Fracas! And if you think Bullpipe was bad, I'm worse! Then the list gets pretty big, so I'll focus on the most prominent roles. On G.I. Joe, a real American hero, you heard him as Shipwreck, Dusty, Buzzer, Thunder, Monkey Wrench, Heavy Metal, and Pauly. He reprised three of those roles, Buzzer, Shipwreck, and Monkey Wrench for the movie. Also on that show, he voiced Hector Ramirez, a character that is shared throughout four Asbro Sunbow production. Hector appeared in Gem, G.I. Joe, and in Humanoids, all voiced by Neil Ross, 
but on Transformers he was voiced by Frank Welker. It's worth noting that Hector Ramirez is a parody of the infamous journalist Geraldo Rivera. He was Howard Sands also from Gem and the voice of John Rambo on Rambo and the Forces of Freedom. On Inhumanoids, on top of Hector Ramirez, he played Herc Armstrong and Slither. On Visionaries, Knights of the Magical Light, he was Leoric. And in the pilot episode of Pride of the X-Men, he was Nightcrawler. Sad thing is, that show never made it. And when they reworked the concept into the X-Men animated series that became popular, the studio announced they didn't want to rehire any of the actors who worked on the previous pilot. It's a harsh business. In 1994's Iron Man, he portrayed Fin Fang Foom, Tony Zad Howard, Blizzard, Yinsen, and the Anchorman. In the same year, he also worked on Fantastic Four, giving life to Doctor Doom, the Super Scroll, Puppet Master, and the Warlord Krang. Then he got to work on another 1994 Marvel show, Spider-Man. He reprised the role of Norman Osborn and his alter ego, the Green Goblin. So maybe he didn't get to play in X-Men, but I think it turned out okay. On the short-lived Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm, he voiced Shang Tsung. He worked on two titles of the Legacy of Kane franchise. In Blood Omen, he was the voice of Malik, Otmar, and the Dollmaker. And on Soul Reaver, he was Rahab. Many Star Wars video games needed his voice, such as Master of Terras Kesi, Rebellion, Rogue Squadron, X-Wing Alliance, and Starfighter, doing many voices, including Han Solo and Boba Fett. And I found out he's Eldot from Baldur's Gate, a recruitable party member in this franchise I adore. He worked on many video games franchises like Metal Gear Solid, Call of Duty, and Doom, and also worked on a movie I wish didn't flop because it would have been a great trilogy, Dragonlance Dragons of Autumn Twilight. In that movie, he played Fizzbon, who was one of my favorite characters in the books. And in recent years, you heard him as Crossfire in The Avengers Hurts Mightiest Hero, or as both Jackie Weeks and Dr. Zvazir in the video games Rage and Rage 2, as well as Mayor Domino from the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Other non-cartoon work I think is worth mentioning, Neil co-announced the 75th annual Academy Awards telecast of 2003, as well as being the announcer on the 56th annual Primetime Emmy Award telecast in 2004. And since 2010, Neil has been the announcer of the AFI Life Achievement Award telecast. To include his narration work, Neil narrated the Movie Magic series which ran for five seasons on Discovery, on top of many documentaries like a &E's biography series, and many editions of Nova on PBS. I for one am glad this man didn't give up when he first got rejected in the 70s. His perseverance gave us great shows we all love and remember. If you want a detailed account of his journey, check out his book Vocal Recall. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Neil Ross's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I really like reading you guys. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care!